friends. Uh, welcome to Change Trails. So today we are having a conversation with Jigisha Shukla. She is the founder of Bagia. Uh, Bagia is creating an ecosystem of craftsmen from all over the country and thus building a very sustainable fashion brand. Uh, so welcome Jigisha. Welcome to Change Trails. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to speak with us. So we'll we'll first start with the basics, Jigisha. Yeah. So you tell us what is sustainable fashion. It's a buzzword, but yeah. I'm sure not many of us know it. So yeah. let's start with that. Uh, I would term as a sustainable fashion as uh, textiles and the handicrafts which uh, provides employment and the good growth opportunity to the all the people who are working towards the cause and also to uh, and also creating. Some such an end product which would not harm our mother nature and also to our skin like, like most of the people as the way and hand do fibers people still prefer to wear because like uh, like the cost uh, people would consider cost as a major factor for shifting a change towards a sustainable lifestyle but people are not much aware that uh, like basically garment is very much uh, essentially is in touch with your skin so you need to be very much aware of this fact that what you're wearing is very important uh, so when you wear something which is herb dyed or something which is hand loom your body feels very uh, um, your skin can breathe the elements like you know uh, like when you read about the ayurvastra which which was practiced uh, in the vedic period so in that they very majorly mentioned that it's very important of what you keep close to your skin so we have to be we have to shift our focus towards bringing sustainability in textiles and when i say uh, bringing sustainability in textile the major awareness is needed in uh, in consumers also and major shift is needed also in the in the brands who want to actively work towards this idea because many times like not all of the brands i prefer like coming from this background like all of the people are not staying very true to their ethics they say handloom they say natural dyes but people don't follow that because like at the end of course your manufacturing cost would go very high when you take handloom fiber when you do natural dyes and you need to see your market area also but then like not terming it as a natural uh, not terming it as not like you know not uh, destroying that legacy of what indian textile has been like not uh, saying fake chanderi as chanderi Correct. that would actually bring down the entire market right. like if you are not able to do that then don't make sustainability as a buzzword just for the marketing like then you would be like you know you would be destroying the root so absolutely i'm totally yeah. with you. i mean and i took that point like india has all i mean as you rightly mentioned from the vedic ages like 4000 5000 years we have always mm. been uh, in favor of the eco friendly um, clothes right i mean you mentioned about textile so whether we always prefer the trees and plant based textile which is cotton mm. which is jute based or i mean to yeah. an extent silk based fabrics and and textile exactly. so we Why did we right. go wrong as a country, uh, Jigisha? I mean, what is what like, is your take? <laughs> it's a, it's not as like it would be a very long process, like uh, like coming back to the British era where they really like you know. Uh, they started this thing as a machine-made garment. Like initially, we were much inclined towards weaving or. uh weaving our own fabric like shera came and they bring in option with us like you know this is a cheaper quality and this is the this is that quality and we started getting variety and that was very fast made okay and and there were a lot of uh, variety uh, choices for people to make there were uh, there were like n number of the fabrics from which you can choose on and people took the easy part like it is said that in, uh, the handloom industry is the second most employment generating industry in india okay it's the second most but the proper initiatives are not taken towards it like agriculture is the first and second is our handloom industry so government should also come in and take this initiative where they educate people like we should have a subject about textile if we really want to see a major major change in the handloom industry of india 
because people are not aware people don't want to change their habits because if you are like used to wearing something <laughs> which is very easily seen in the market and which is according to the style and the latest style and the trends and you can like you know where you can buy like almost 1000 pieces a year then you won't shift to that lifestyle where you are just buying one garment in a month so that kind of the mindset is very much necessary and since we have come a long way like from british era to now to the modern age people are becoming aware like people are taking conscious choices but the uh, but the bar like the graph of that people are very less it, it, it's still like people would take it for fashion but people won't take it because it's something which is handy so you know that kind of empathy that kind of compassionate uh, Uh, that kind of compassion needs to be there from uh, from the people, and also like I uh, like also from the brands, they need to bring more styles, more uh, quirkiness, more fun into the garments. Like that's why how Bagya started. Like we, yeah, I really yeah, love so, that. So that really is, that is my hands. next question. Uh, yeah. So how did <laughs> how did this start? Uh, how did Bagya start? What was I mean? What start Bagya? to get into this segment what was the turning point for you uh, so uh, like even in my college project i used to do a lot of work with indian textiles like indian textiles or connecting with the mother earth comes very natural to me it's not something i have to build up because i wanted to start with this kind of the brand but i always wanted to work in that, that particular area Uh, but what i majorly observed in our handicrafts and everything like it's very exquisite it's it's very matlab it's very amazing if you'll see the process the outcome and everything but i saw somewhere that uh, some kind of the quirkiness or some kind of the joy element was missing okay so like then i started conceptualizing uh, bagya like you know where i can work with indian textiles indian artisan and do my contemporary eco dyeing technique so whenever you'll see any one garment if you'll pick uh, one garment of bagya it would have stories from like majorly from three four states so if i talk about our kimono uh, so kimono the basic uh, the main body of the fabric comes from bihar so that's that is like okay the inside fabric which is of kadamkari comes from andhra pradesh and that is also naturally right okay and the pockets of it is of brocade which is from banaras so so i thought of bringing something new the people can think of like you know this this is handloom but this is something different giving due respect to the weavers they create very beautiful garments but i just wanted a, a bit of shift and also like uh, all of our garments are unisex so anybody can wear and th- those are free styles so it's not made according to the sizes but it's mostly free style garment where it particularly depicts your freedom like uh, you know it's not something which uh, like confines you into something. so when did yeah. when did you start uh, bagya so, so i started two and half years back but like majorly one and half year went into the exploration Correct. basically i was working because this is not a technique which has been practiced over years so i was working with eco dye so i started from small room where i made uh, like 50 to 100 samples but then i was not able to color fast those things so it was on every wash the color was coming out then like me and my friend uh, took a training from from avni and then we started again so it was like lot lots and lots of experimentation which meant before because like you know majorly even in the eco dyes if you see in the market so mostly people do eco dyes for fun because it's very fun process even i love when i started it was very very fun but uh, and all- also and also like in eco dyes uh, like people start, have started using chemicals also now to build up the entire palette which was naturally dyed and on indian handloom fabric it was another difficult task because all of the Ind- indian handloom fabrics are very different from each other like uh, and in the eco dye since it's a entire handcrafted process so you will see the change of the patterns so something which i have done on kala cotton which is from kutch would be different on something which is done on chanderi okay and their color fastness property would also be different 
their light uh, fast property would also be different okay so <laughs> lot of experimentation and lot of work went into creating obviously, something yeah. and obviously and and see miss see i mean you are creating an ecosystem of artisans and people around the country mm-hmm. right so how how do you go about picking these people i mean do you personally go yeah. and visit them and uh, see their talent see what they do how they are placed so all that you will do as part of your research yeah yeah so majorly all of our artisans to finding the artisan because they always have their group project or something they have visited certain artisan in their college and they would tell me that you know that this uh, weaver is doing such a fabulous job we can we can you know buy uh, some raw material from them and that's how the entire process started because someone has seen that how the entire thing is being made and also i tell my artisan that you know please uh, like whatever you give me you need to give me with a mark so they usually provide we may provide me with handloom mark and rest like while we do exhibition we need many artisans craft people to whom we interact so i pick some of the fabrics first see how they function like uh, what are the certificates that fabrics have and then we proceed towards the next so when you will see on our website so that is the one one thing with like you know one major thing i would say that which, which we have tried is bringing transparency like on our website if you'll see on every garment the artisan number is given people do mention their name but here the artisan number is given so like you can buy from them if you come across them because like we had a first on experience with them so that so we can we can assure you about their quality so we have given the name like you know if you want to buy because this kind of the community we need to create somewhere somewhere i can't be very much i can't have that thing that you know he is my artisan because artisan is of no one okay if you are telling that you promote ethical fashion you promote sustainability you are promoting weavers and the artisans across india though you are not promoting them you are using their work so you need to give their due credits like they have immense immense experience like uh, like i would be nothing in front of them so like if i'm buying something from them then at least like i should give their number to any of the people who would like to buy from them so that is the small initiative which we have done on our website so that people can go and like you know check their work and buy from them yeah cool. creating good opportunity yeah, cool so 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 how does the ecosystem work so you procure it from the craftsmen and artisan and yeah. uh, and then you put up your own margin and sell it to the customers or i mean is it yeah you are just facilitating like amazon so how does no. the business model No, no. So this is like we buy handloom textiles and crafts uh, from artisans and weavers across India, and then we do our own eco dyeing technique on it, okay. which is on in our manufacturing unit. We do that, okay. okay. And then majorly before COVID, we were doing uh, exhibitions. We were we were okay. doing quite uh, like you know. Two, two exhibitions in a month or like uh, one exhibition in a month so we were doing exhibition but like post covid the things have shifted so now we are we have come up with our website which was a very intensive work and now we are tying up with some more platforms where we can sell our products so oh, oh. this is how it function oh. yeah so everything comes to us and then we do our own dyeing technique and then we design and then and it goes to the market. so just yeah. a quick question jigisha on the yes. dyes so what kind of dyes are there and how do you make them okay. so is there a, again a science behind making some dyes and uh, <laughs> how, how do you go about it i mean especially it's, for for like a, a layman like us <laughs> i mean how does that process of dyeing <laughs> it's lot of chemistry like each of the dye in the preparation of the dye you have to look after a very minute minute thing you have to first be very sure of the temperature you have to be sure of the ph value of your water and the ph value of your final dye you have to see that you know how much proportion of the dye you are using so like uh, when i say when i dye one particular fabric so first i take weight of the fabric okay then according to the weight of the fabric i take quantity of my dye and according to the and when i want to change the color of the dye so i have to use a proper proportion of the mordants 
okay and that is also a different quantity like it will depend in uh, it will depend on the weight of the fabric and then after post dyeing i need to see that what i want to use as a post mordant depending on the uh, quality of the dye and the mordant which i have used for the pre mordanting thing so it's a lot of the chemistry and the <laughs> technical part is involved and that's yeah, why i told sure. you that it so took is, is one there and a half year yeah. which is helping you so i have a group of artisans so those are self trained women so when i started i trained them and now of course they help me with a lot of things awesome yeah awesome yeah. so how many people are there currently five so we have okay, five cool. artisans yeah yeah and and uh, how do you go about selling i mean uh, you you tell us like if i want to buy bagia how should i go about yeah. it yeah <laughs> so uh, we have a website ready and now we would be uploading our new collection so you can just check out our website that that you have all the information so anybody who doesn't know even edge of handloom fabric they would know everything about the handloom fabric because we have written the entire description of our textiles we have written the medicinal properties of the herbs that we are using we have written the entire craft story so everything is over there like how the garment awesome. is made basically yeah so so uh, and you are serving within india or outside as well uh, outside or... also okay outside but also. within yeah. india anybody can buy right i mean uh, we, we just need to place an order to get your product yeah 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 okay cool 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 because in covid times it's i mean it's <laughs> difficult for anybody to go out and buy yeah. stuff so it's always preferable to have a digital channel <laughs> so right so 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 you yeah. you have been there from one and a half year so how are people reacting to it so what is what is the reaction and how how are the, how's the growth happening so like when we were doing exhibition so there were a lot of the conversation which was happening if you find something which is very new you would ask about it but the first thing which i see when somebody sees bagya's wardrobe is they would they would have a big smile over it like even if they don't buy they would have smile that you know this is something different <laughs> so uh, yeah but uh, it has been a very very nice journey with a lot of gratitude we have got lots and lots of blessing like uh, people do tell us that you know this is a very different concept so it may might take time to you know to fly but don't give up you're doing such an amazing work and stuff and people are really like you know even if it's different people are really trying that you know they should be ordered and when i get when we get uh, get post note that you know that uh, people are asking me from where you have bought this this is reversible this is detachable how cool is this people are asking so uh it it has been good but uh, some like as i mentioned it's a very new concept so reaching out to huge market has been a challenge for us but we are targeting it like we are doing different different things where we are doing live sessions we are focusing more on the videos like this time we did very nice photography like for the first time we invested in photography that you know people should know that how it looks when uh, like you know it's nicely styled so yeah <laughs> so that's so how definitely i would agree with them you are making a huge uh, designers yeah. with you i mean you have fashion designers with you who will create uh, 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 clothes yeah so initially we started as a very small team where i was taking care of all the design work and thing like i have done my post graduate from pearl like i am myself a fashion designer but now i have team who does majorly work on the research part like uh, like and th- on those part we were not able to work but i have a team of us uh, like uh, interns who works very extensively and who do a lot of hard work towards the research and building up the story around the product because somewhere when you do designing and you are involved with the manufacturing you are not able to create that kind of the story but now they are coming up and also like in the designing also they help me like with a lot of uh, different different stuff like this we can make this we can make this is the market where we can target so, yeah so now it's building up yeah awesome and how how do you how are you seeing the growth i mean is the growth good sustainable i mean in terms of yeah so well, like when we started with the exhibition uh, like uh, like as i mentioned it was a very nice story like we were seeing like you know we were doing really good in south we do really good like we uh, exhibit with the craft 
council of karnataka and we do a lot of uh, exhibitions at dasaka there we have got a very good response but coming back to the covid situation i'll say you very honestly because uh, we took our time towards making website and then coming on the digital platform so we took good uh, two months okay because it was the entire ship where you were majorly focusing on your physical presence and now you are being into that digital platform so this 2 3 months had been hard but uh, as i mentioned that uh, the website you will see it has come really beautiful and now yes, the, yes. Kind of, <laughs> the kind of the kind of the inquiries i would i would advise my i mean people would be reading really beautiful <laughs> yeah. so yeah so there was lot of lot of hard work because i wanted to create like if i was investing time then i wanted to get it done very nicely so that even if it it will take months i knew that it would take months to create a platform like that but now again back we have started getting the inquiries so now we are like you know coming back yeah, you again will, you will. Yeah. this this will definitely pass i mean yeah. uh, i mean world yeah. needs to pass and so that everybody yeah. come back to the normal stuff So, uh, so my final question, Jigisha, what is your personal connection with nature, with environment, with sustainability? Uh, personally, I mean, apart from yeah. the brand and apart from the stuff it's, which you are doing, <laughs> it's very easy, very, very easy. Like you know, I would switch off everything. Like, घर में अगर कोई light ज़्यादा चला रहा है तो मैं बंद करके and if some and matlab if someone is washing their hands like kam karke bhi you can wash your hands and also like it brings me smile when i'm like you know around many of the trees that, that is a very uh, like funny thing but when i'm around trees or something i really sense that thing so this kind of small small things where i don't know i'm um, don't use plastic bag use cloth bag uh don't spill water like you know don't waste food like i would be the first when i'd be the first one switching off the lights or like spending my entire salary on to be things i won't buy anything like my water so in fact i should so something kind of that so for that i wouldn't think but when it comes to buying something as a garment which is like uh, which is um man i would think that i said i don't want to spend Absolutely. and as i mentioned before that is how the game it never came as like you know because sustainability is a buzzword and this is the time where we can think of this kind of the concept which is also good like you are you are thinking in a positive way also going to create an impact with that kind of the mindset but this was very natural to me i always wanted to do this thing so for me the sustainability was never a buzzword i was living that lifestyle years before and even our parents have been so far others have been living that lifestyle years they were not flaunting about it कि हम लोग पानी बचाते हैं या फिर हम चलना प्रेफर करते हैं यूटिलाइज एवरी थिंग विद एट मोस्ट वैल्यू एंड नाउ वी आर लाइक फॉर वैल्यू ऑफ दी थिंग्स लाइक वी वुड जस्ट रिप्लेस इट एंड दे वुड क्रिएट अ पर्सनल कनेक्ट विद दैट थिंग सो दैट वॉज वेरी इजी टू दैम एंड कम्स वेरी इजी टू मी सो दैट्स हाउ आई कनेक्ट टू दी एंटायर आइडिया anybody uh, you idealize uh, i'm not particularly like uh, like of course like from all of the people i get inspired a lot like on their good points like something somebody is doing this like it's really nice like we can pick two three points or okay? Kind of that, uh, a kind of the lifestyle, but I wouldn't say any. And particularly, like I idolize who uh, helped me and who has, like you know, been an inspiration to me in many ways, but not one person. No. It's like along the journey, the people came and I learned, and that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> awesome! 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 So, so thanks a lot, Gisha. I mean, you are not only helping the local artisans, craftsmen. making a difference in their life 
but you are making a difference in the on the planet on the environment on the sustainability mm-hmm. so you are making a huge difference and creating a huge on uh, doing this we are all consumers are there to help you <laughs> and you. i'm sure people would be picking your product for sure so thanks a lot thank you thank you so much varun for having me this is a fun flower sari where you can see on the pallu part we have done a small applique like you know small patches of the flowers so this sari is dyed in lark lark is an animal excrete okay and it's completely natural and it gives beautiful shades of pink red purple and then our sarees always have a kalamkari border or the fall which we normally say kalamkari or bag printed fall so that you know even if you want to drape it in a different way then you will have a beautiful shade of the kalamkari patch you know and it will make the saree look really beautiful so this is also in chanderi silk hand hand woven chanderi silk procured from one of the weaver in madhya pradesh